most of <laughs> got it okay hang on a second <laughs> most people here are you know have, have been in the club for a while except for judy so some of the things i was going to say in the beginning i was just going to uh kind of commend people for continuing to participate i know prints are hard to do especially now that you have to deliver your print to the you know to david or the judge and then you have to pick them up but i know david and the board are working and hopefully they should have things ironed out with the church and maybe we'll be able to get back to the church especially for print night uh, i don't really mind it so much for digital night but for print night it it was so much easier when you just walked in with your print put it on a rack nobody knew whose it was and let they unless they saw you put it on the rack, I guess. Oh no, I guess you turned them into Don and Steve. They put them on the rack. Mm -hmm. um, so one, one little reminder on the back, make sure you put your name on the back of the print, uh, the title of the piece, what category it's in, and then an arrow pointing up so that when, if you do submit it to Salon, people get it on the rack the right way, so. Uh, let's see. The other thing is I, I really could, the, the difference in the images from the digitals to the prints is just, I mean, it's just incredible. The prints were so much more fun to look at than the digital images last, you know, two weeks ago. I took them downstairs and I laid them all out in my studio so I could see them all and I could walk around and look at them. And then, you know, the digitals, you know, are like what, 72 DPI, you know, and those prints are just, you know, probably 240, 300 DPI. They're several times bigger. They're just, you know, they just have so much more impact. So I hope you can get over to the open house. David and Judith are going to have another little open house and display the prints. And you can come to the open house or if you're just free sometime, you can go over, you know, by yourself and see them. But I think you'll see, you know, a huge difference. <clears throat> the other thing is some of the digitals that you're going to see tonight when we're doing the judging are not very good. You know, I don't know if people send in, a, you know, digital that was too small, but there were a couple that I scored really high. And when you see the digitals, you're going to think, oh, God, those, those don't look good at all. But you got to see the real thing. It looks really good. Uh, let's see. And if I guess, well, Judy's really the only kind of new person here. Uh, but I was going to suggest if anybody like Judy, if if you want to, well, you must have participated. Did you have prints in our, our oh, I guess I can't hear you. Never mind. Never mind. Judy, <laughs> okay. Judy, you can unmute yourself on the lower left or hold your space I, bar down. I did have a print, but I didn't know what to do with it. So okay. I submitted digital, but not the print. Oh, okay. Well, that, that's the next time if you want. Sure. You know, and if you need some help, I can talk to you about it, how to get one printed, or, you know, if you, you need to mount it, I can even help you mount, you know, one a couple of times to kind of get you started. I just wanted you to know that, you know, lots of people in the club will help. So you just have to ask questions. So, okay. All right. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Okay. Well, now the hard part. I'm going to try to share my screen like this. Whoa, it worked. <laughs> oh, okay. We're going to do print general color. Should I go ahead and open it, Colleen? Yeah, print general color, starting with a winter's rest. All right. Perfect. Well, <clears throat> It's kind of hard for everybody else when you start with one of the best prints and you know of the whole night but this is one of the best uh, you know there's quite a bit of impact here because the animal fills the screen the bighorn sheep i guess is what this is um, <clears throat> and the person that matted this i know we're not supposed to comment on the map but they had a little tiny border around the edge that picked up the color in the eye right here, which was really a nice touch. And you know, I don't, we don't take that into consideration when you're judging, but it really does make a difference. And uh, so if you, 
are going to participate in our big exhibit in the spring, you can mat your piece any way you want. Uh, you can do any size or whatever too. So um, let's see. I like the way the snow kind of runs along the bottom because it kind of repeats the, the muzzle, the white on the muzzle. Uh, on the print, the background is even more subtle, I think, because one of my favorite things on the print is this tree in the background. It's just real, you know, a little more subtle than it shows up here. And um, it's, you know, great composition. The fact that the, the bighorn sheep is so close really has, you know, lots of impact. And I scored this one five, five, five. Oh, hold on. The deal here. A rust? That is A Winter's Rust by Donna Larson. 15 points. Way okay, to beautiful. start out the night. Yeah, that's a beautiful one. Good. Whoop, whoop. Okay, did I? Yeah, I guess I did click. Okay. Abstract. Um, oops, I'm just making a little note here. There we go. Okay, this is a nice, pleasing color palette. I like, you know, all the the blues and the greens here. Uh, a lot of times when you have pictures like this, there's no place to really kind of focus and your eye jumps around, but there's one larger feather right here that's quite a bit lighter. And that's kind of the focal point for me. You know, if I look around at all the other feathers, I kind of come back to this one little spot here to rest my eye for a minute. Um, there's one little tiny red feather up in the left-hand corner. And I think it would, improve the picture if that was either cloned out or cropped out because once you see it it's a little distracting you kind of keep jumping up there at that at that color because it's the only place it really appears in the image um it's it's pretty sharp but i think i would like it even a little bit sharper i've seen feathers that have just been incredibly sharp so it, i think this might work you know could be just a little bit sharper I scored this one four for composition, four for impact, and four for technical. Abstract by Don Burdell, 12 points. Nice job, Don. Heads up. Okay, now this, this is kind of an unusual one because the print is really different than this image right here. This image is actually, I like this image better than the print. And I'll, I'll tell you why in a minute. But it, it looks like possibly uh, a person has cut this parrot out and put it on a different background. Now, I might be wrong. And if they did, I really like the background. It really makes the parrot pop out. But you can kind of see a little bit of that, you know, kind of halo along the, the beak there, but, but not anywhere else. So they did a good job. And the, the textures in here are just, you know, great. They're fun to look at. The colors are fun and just really strong. The only thing when you look at the print, it looks like the person, I mean, this almost looks square. And they may have had a mat that was, you know, rectangular. And so they stretched this to print it so it would fit in the mat because the parrot is really kind of, I don't know, just... When you look at it, you, you think something's wrong. I don't know what is it. And then you look at the eye and the eye is an oval, quite an oval. It's really stretched out. And that was real bothersome. I liked all the other things about this, but that, I mean, I'm, I'm judging the print, not this. This would get a much higher score than the print. Uh, so I scored this one three for composition because the eye's pretty close to the middle. Uh, four for impact and three for technical. Heads up by Don Burnell, 10 points. Maybe Don can tell us later if that's what happened. <laughs> um, I'm watching you. Okay. Well, this is a, a kind of a fun image. It's real flat, really bold color, you know, big, you know, bold shapes. And you see the face in it right away, the eyes and the, the nose here. And, you know, our, and our, our brain is just set up as we always look for faces in things. And I'll probably mention that on another, another piece tonight. 
But this is also one of those, those images that the judges always have trouble with where someone's taken a photograph of somebody else's artwork. But here, I think it works because what they did was they took a piece of somebody else's artwork and created their own image. At least that's what I think happened. Um, so it's, it holds your attention because there's a face. Um, it's a really strong, you know, bold image. I, I gave this a, just a three for composition, but a five for impact and a four for technical. I'm watching you by John Stokum, 12 points. All right, John. Maple bouquet. Okay, this is mine. <laughs> so, and I had David Sam's judge mine. And David's a harder judge than I am. So, but he said about this one, the colors feel natural in this photo. It's not forced, but realistic. The composition is effective. So he gave me a three for composition, a four for impact, and a four for technical. Okay. Maple Bouquet by John Lepper, 11 points. Whoop, am I moving here? It's kind of going slow to the next image. Whoop. Oh, no, here it is. Okay, Palouse Thunderhead. And here's another lesson. If you have two prints, make sure that they don't start, you know, too close together in the alphabet because this is mine too. <laughs> so uh, David said about this one, a dramatic subject that is represented in a way that feels photographically true. Nothing is forced providing an experience that feels like being there. I think that cropping out the small structures and machines on the left might be an improvement. And I would agree with him now that I've looked at it. I don't even think I noticed them before. So he gave me a four for composition, a five for impact and a five for technical. Uh, hold on. So that was a four? Four, five, five. Yeah. Thank you. All right, Palouse Thunderhead by John Lepper, 14 points. Okay, now something real different. Ooh. Sir Gobbler. Sir Gobbler. Well, it's perfect for the season and uh, for Thanksgiving that's coming up. And it's really an interesting turkey. I don't know if I would want to eat this turkey uh, because of the coloring, <laughs> but it's really a, it looks like somebody was playing with, you know, some new processing. And later on, there's another image that's kind of using the same technique. So I, I'm a, kind of assuming they're the same person, but, but it's really interesting and it's fun when people try something new. And I'm probably more open to the new things like this than some of the other judges that, that are more used to, you know, judging traditional photography. Um, so anyway, this is very striking because of the colors, the color combination. I kind of wish there was a little bit of something happening in the eye here. It's fairly flat. I can almost see something in the, in the digital, but the, the print's pretty flat and black. Um, and it's always hard to judge non-traditional stuff like this. You know, there's a lot of subjectivity because you never know exactly what the maker is, you know, going for. But I, I scored this one four for composition, five for impact, and four for technical. Sure, Gobbler by Elaine Giadoni, 13 points. Elaine's doing something new. <laughs> Sir this Bay might be the one that, that Judy, yeah, that Judy did not, she did not submit the, the print, so I didn't judge it and didn't oh. even realize it, it was in here until like, you know, yesterday when I first looked at the digitals. Okay, this is, I, you want, you're going to talk about it? Well, I don't know. I was just kind of looking at it to, to see. Um, I like the way that you've, you've, you know, got the sun over here and these, that's pretty cool. You might want to lighten up the lions a little bit if, if you have that, I don't know what sort of uh, programs you're using, but those would be pretty easy to do in Lightroom with a, with a radial filter, and they might make those pop out a little bit more. And uh, let's see, the sky is really nice. It looks like a pretty good exposure. Nothing's blown out. I really like these soft clouds up here. And, you know, so I think that's pretty good. 
Uh, I don't know if there'd been some other angles. I hope you took more pictures, but maybe some other angles where you, you wouldn't see the, the, the numbers over here, or, you know, maybe you take, could take this little white pipe out over here and this little piece of, I don't know what that little line is over there, but otherwise it's pretty good. And also maybe moving the lines a little more to the left uh, or, you wouldn't want them in the middle, but maybe having them a little bit more off center would, would, you know, make it a little more dynamic, but we'll, we'll try to help you so, Judy, so you can get a print, but hopefully you'll, you'll do digital next month. So, so. Okay. The light. <laughs> okay. Well, again, this is another, uh, digital that's a little bit different than the print. When you look at the lighthouse here, it's a little bit tilted to the right, but in the print, it's it's perfect. So they they probably when they put it in the the mat, they tipped it just a little bit. So that you know I'm not taking that into consideration because it's perfect on the on the print. Um, this is a lighthouse that probably most of you have photographed. I've never photographed it. I don't know why. I think it maybe it's further down the coast than I, than we usually go. And I don't really have a long lens. I've been told that you have to have a fairly long lens to shoot this one. Um, let's see. It's, it's really nice that the photographer caught the light in the lighthouse. That's a real plus. Uh, and something that you know we all try to, to get if we can. It's a nice kind of foggy day. And looks like they're pretty lucky because the fog is not you know, shrouding the lighthouse here. It stands out pretty good. It might be just a little bit soft back in here. And that could just be, you know, the fog making it that soft because the rocks look pretty sharp down here. Um, let's see, what did I say? I was thinking about this. Um, hopefully they were on a tripod because when you're shooting something at this distance, you probably need to be on a tripod. Um, I tried to think if you know there was anything else I could suggest. I think it might make kind of an interesting vertical, you know, an eight by ten or you know five by seven crop and take out a chunk of the ocean over here on the left. But that would probably change what the photographer's going for because that sort of you know vastness of the ocean and being able to disappear into the fog would would go away if you cropped it that way. But it does look nice with a vertical crop. Um, let's see, I scored this one four for composition, four for impact, and four for technical. The Light by Tamara McGee, 12 points. The opening. All right, well, this blossom really stands out here. And if this was taken in Manitou Park, I think I might have tried to photograph this same plant because I really found it interesting with these fuzzy little, you know, pods on here, and then the you know the big blossoms. Um, this is kind of nice because it's got this extra little blossom that's open up here, so there's a repeat of the color. Um, the blossom is almost like an artist's illustration. If I zoom in, I mean, it's just like really detailed and just, you know, really stands out. Um, the only criticism I had was, you know, the, the vignette is pretty strong. Um, and one of our members, Carl Hoaglum, told me once that he never uses the vignette slider. He paints his vignettes in so he can kind of vary where he's painting it and how much he paints in, in each corner and uh, I don't know if that something like that would help here, you know, and, and maybe make some of these other leaves, you know, pop out a little bit more. But that's about the only thing I think that I thought was a little bit heavy was the vignette. So I scored this four for composition, five for impact, and four for technical. The opening by Dorothy Detler, 13 points. Nice job. Zen. Zen. Okay, here's another one of those. It's kind of similar to, to Mr. Gobbler, but a little more, you know, traditional uh, subject matter, I guess. Uh, fairly, you know, straightforward composition. 
uh, but it's nice. It's it's moved off to the to the side. I really like this kind of interesting patterns and stuff in the blue background. I find that you know almost more interesting than the than the water lily, which is a little jarring to me because it's got so much of this you know glow in it. But I'll tell you, it really it really stands out. You wouldn't miss this if it was on the wall. Um, kind of reminds me of you know, pop art, maybe something Andy Warhol would have done. And again, this is, you know, artist's intention here. So it's, it's kind of hard to judge things that are, where they're using really different, you know, techniques and, you know, doing something different. So I scored this for five for impact and four for technical. Zen by Elaine Giadoni, 13 points. Okay. Oh, let's see if we can okay, do that. So now we're at um, general monochrome. And abstract is our first one. Okay. Uh, well, this says giraffe without <clears throat> showing us a whole giraffe. At least I hope it's a giraffe. Um, and this one didn't get me real excited when I first laid it out in my studio, but then the more I picked it up and looked at it, the more I really, I really liked it. Um, there isn't a real, you know, spot where your eye really kind of goes to. So my eye did that thing where I'm looking for something and I find a buffalo over here, <laughs> just a little bit to the left of center. You probably can't see my cursor. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and then my wife was looking at it and she, I said, what did she see? She saw a rhinoceros <laughs> and somebody else came over and was looking. They saw a dog. So I don't know. But anyway, uh, I think it really works pretty well to say giraffe. I wished it was just a little bit sharper. You know, I'm not sure what, you know, the coat of a giraffe looks like up real close. But, you know, I, I think that the hair, you know, maybe could, you know, be just a little bit sharper. Uh, and I scored this one three for composition, four for impact, and four for technical. Abstract by Donald Burnell, 11 points. Denise and her dolls. Okay, well, this is another one of mine. <laughs> oh. And uh, I know this, this lady, Denise Roberson, and she makes these dolls. So this, this is what David Sam said about this one. This is a very strong image that illustrates the passion of the doll's owner. The range of tones is superb and the tinting is very pleasing. He gave me a four for composition, a four for uh, impact and a five for technical. Denise and her dolls by John Lepper, 13 points. Dinner was great. <laughs> I think they need to add on to that. You know, dinner was great and now it's time to floss. There's a little something coming out of its mouth here. Uh, another nice wildlife uh, image. And it really has a lot of impact because it fills the, the frame completely. And that's always, to me, is, is a real plus on a wildlife picture. It's a little bit grainy and that could be intentional. Or it could be the fact that the photographer was quite a ways away. Usually they don't let you get all that close to these big tortoises. So I'm thinking maybe the, the photographer was, was off in the distance, which might be a good thing. It looks like this tortoise is a vegetarian, but you never know. Um, and if a photographer really wanted to get some of the grain out, they could probably put this in topaz and use the AL clear and then maybe that topaz denoise. I've used that on a couple of things and it really did make a difference. I was, I was real surprised and I barely knew what I was doing so it can't be that hard. Um, let's see. So I scored this four for composition, five for impact and four for technical. Dinner was great by Don Burnell, 13 points. Don's got some interesting animals. Evening stroll. Okay, well, we've had a few uh, 
images of the Oregon coast. I'm kind of assuming the Oregon coast. Uh, we've had a few this year and the judges always wish for a couple or a bird or something like that. And I got my wish and I didn't even have to ask out loud. Here's a couple strolling down the beach. We've got nice, you know, sort of leading lines with the edge of the, 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 the water leading us back into the picture. And the, uh, you know, the, the mist, which you see a lot on the Oregon coast and these, these little mountains here give it a lot of depth. And when you get back here, you kind of follow this, this line up and you end up back over here where this couple is. And if you've ever strolled on the Oregon coast with a loved one, you know, you can imagine yourself right here. I mean, there's a story in this one. Whenever there's people in a picture, there ends up being a story, which is, which is a real plus. And I think this one would probably sell because people can imagine that, you know, that's them and they want to remember their, their walk on the Oregon coast. So I gave this one, oh, a 555. Five, five. Hold on, I can't hit numbers in the right spaces. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> Evening stroll by Elaine Giadoni, 15 points. Nice job, Elaine. Parkade. Okay, this is an example of a digital that's probably been submitted too small because it just doesn't do the print justice at all. I mean, it's a wonderful print. And this, you're just not even going to get it by looking at this. I don't know. And even when I zoom in, see, it's a, not real sharp. But the, the real picture is very, very crisp, real sharp. It's just a great black and white. Uh, I don't know how many times we've all walked by this structure downtown. And it is one of the more unique architectural structures in Spokane. But it's, it's really hard to photograph because you can't get back far enough. And this photographer has kind of chosen to, to highlight one area of the parkade mostly, that big tower. And it, it really stands out a lot more in the print. I think that's the elevator tower, I'm not really sure. And they use this mezzanine canopy to kind of bring you into it. And then this uh, off ramp back here, kind of, you know, as a juxt juxtaposed because it's so different, you know, it's like a round, you know, uh, element. And then we've got these big, you know, the big tall tower here. And then we have these other verticals, you know, kind of, you know, radiating out. Um, I know there's at least one judge in the club that would really want all these verticals to be straight up and down. And I don't think that bothers me in this, this picture because I mean, I kind of think that's the way cameras work. But I know, uh, for instance, David Sams would probably have taken this picture and included more in the picture and then straightened all these verticals out and then cropped back so that all the verticals were straight up and down. And the only ones that, that aren't are these ones just right close to the left edge right here. Um, it's a little bit light over in this, where this tree is. And that's pretty hard to, you know, burn that in. I know I've tried that and it usually kind of shows up. Uh, it's, it was a nice time of day to take the picture. There's no people in the picture. You know, your main focus is architecture. Black and white's a good choice because black and white really is about, you know, shape and, you know, tone. And uh, at first I thought, well, maybe it would be better if there was some clouds in the sky, but I think not. I think it would, would take away from this, you know, these real hard edge shapes. So I hope you make it over to uh, Judith and Dave's and can actually see this one because it is a lot, lot nicer. And I scored this one. Uh, five for composition, five for impact, and four for technical. Arcade by John Stelkum, 14 points. Nice job, John. John doesn't stay up this late at night. He watches later. <laughs> Sundog. Okay, well, in some ways, the, the digital is, oh, I noticed a couple of things I didn't see on the print. So maybe they've been taken care of because <laughs> I didn't notice them at all on the print. Uh, but this is real unusual. I've never seen a sundog this 
strong and I've never photographed one. And this is kind of a, a real unique way to capture it because they've used this, this uh, building here to kind of bisect the, the circle of the sun dog. And the, the thing that I noticed were these little, you know, sensor spots, like there's one there and there's a whole bunch of them, but they must have taken them out because I sure didn't see them on the print. So I'm not judging, you know, on those at all. If they're on the print, boy, <laughs> I just didn't see them at all. I like the, the edge treatment too. I think it kind of helps keep us in the picture. And, uh, and I, you know, and that the white around the edge also is kind of a nice rectangle, which, you know, juxtaposes against this, this circular sun dog. And this is one that, you know, first, I mean, I've scored all these things and I went back like the next day and looked at them again, I changed a couple. And then again, today I changed a couple. So I don't know, I ended up scoring this one five, five, five. Sundog by Dorothy Detler, 15 points. A really different, unique image, Dorothy. It is, yeah. Through the arch. Okay, another lighthouse. Uh, I think it's kind of nice the way they framed the lighthouse with this driftwood or this, you know, tree that's fallen down and not wrapped, probably driftwood, but I yeah, probably a tree, I can't tell. But I like that. And oftentimes we'll, we'll do a landscape shot and we're so focused on the landscape, we forget to include something in the foreground that adds depth to the picture. And if you're one of the, if you're on our club Facebook page, you'll note that Carl Hoglum has posted a couple pictures from Glacier in the last month. And in both of them, he's just got incredible foreground elements, but also gorgeous background elements and everything is in focus. This one, the lighthouse is just a little bit softer, I think, than the, 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 the driftwood. Um, I don't know. I think Carl uses a focus stacking in his D850 to get everything in, in focus. Um, <clears throat> and I looked at this one and I don't know, I think a person could almost even crop, crop out the little house and part of this wood on the left and have you know, another image out of this if they really wanted to. So let's see, what did I say here? So I scored this one uh, four for composition. Oh, and, oh, the other thing is, I don't really care for the edge treatment on this one. The last one kind of had one of those little black lines around the edge, but this one, I, I don't really think this one works, at least for me, you know, for this particular image. So I gave this one a four for composition, a four for impact, and a four for technical. Through the Arch by Dorothy Detler, 12 points. And the last one. Tunnel View. Okay, well, I have never gotten to go to Yosemite, but I'm pretty sure this is Yosemite Valley. And I'm pretty sure that some of you in the club have photographed at this same location. And it's one of those things where you come through at a certain time of day, and this is what you get. And it depends on the day as far as what your light is going to be. And this light's pretty contrasty here. I'd have no idea what time of day it is, but there's some pretty pretty dark shadows over here uh, and a sky that really is just kind of crying out for something. And if the person who did this really wanted to, they could, they could probably cut the sky out and try to add something else and just see what happens. I think because there's so many trees in here um, that some selective dodging and burning could maybe add a little more interest in this area down here where the trees kind of push some areas back a little bit, pull some closer. Um, I, and I think that, you know, especially maybe over here in the right, I think you could, if you, you like, you know, painting, you could probably dodge and burn in here and get a little more depth in, in the picture. And wouldn't it be nice if there was more water <laughs> coming across here, so. Uh, I scored this one four for composition, three for impact, and four for technical. All right, Tunnel View by Tamara McGee, 11 points. 
And that Tamara gets to go everywhere. I know. I'm jealous. Okay, so subject color. All in a row. Well, again, we start with a, one of the best in the, in the group. Uh, the person who submitted this, maybe they know I like rusty old trucks. And here's a bunch, I, I don't think I've ever seen these. I don't know where they're located. And I don't know if this is an HDR, the, the, the colors in here just really pop out. Um, it's a real plus because they've got this sky with some clouds in it. And the trucks are kind of running at a diagonal back and the sky is kind of running at a diagonal, but up and those two diagonals really kind of give the picture more impact. Um, you know, I looked at this, I, I really can't, I don't think I could suggest anything. Maybe, you know, you could, you know, darken this, you know, the trucks here off on the right, but I don't really think you need to. I think this is gorgeous. And once again, this person, I, I assume it's the same person, uh, when they matted it, they picked up this rusty color here in the trucks and they have a little tiny thin border of that rusty color, which just really really, you know, it's nice. I like that a lot. So, uh, but anyway, I, I, I gave this one five, five, five. All in a row by Donna Larson, 15 points. Oh, that Donna, she oh, did that on purpose so she could be first. I know. <laughs> Started with the letter A. <laughs> Georgetown steam plant. Okay. This is another one that the digital is just nothing like the print. And I mean, like if I zoom in on this and see how, you know, it's not sharp. I think, I don't know what, if they submitted this at a, you know, lower resolution or what, but the print is gorgeous. This is one of my favorite prints of the whole night. I like, you know, stuff like this, you know, like the rusty old trucks. And you have to see this one because it's, it's just technically it's perfect. I, they must have done an HDR because they've got everything outside the windows, you know, is, is working. You can't really, you know, again, it doesn't look good in this picture. Uh, and even in these areas that were probably awfully dark, uh, there's detail everywhere. It's just, it, and it just glows. It's just a great print. I don't know where they had it printed, but uh, I just love this one. And I gave this one a 555. Georgetown steam plant by John Stokum, 15 points. I'm going to have to talk to John about how he submits his, his images, his digitals. <laughs> he never does digital night. He only does prints because he likes to see them printed. But this one's a gorgeous one. Lake Machines. Okay, Lake Machine. Uh, I don't know whose this one is. They, I think they must have four images submitted but it's mounted in a way I haven't seen before. So whoever it belongs to, I'd like to know how, how they mounted it or who mounted it for them. Cause it's kind of unique the way it's put on a, a backing. And uh, I'd like to find out what they did. Um, the exposure is pretty good. I mean, it's, it's good everywhere except back here in the sky. And the clouds are really blown out up here. Um, so that's, that's not good. Uh, the subject is machine or machines. And so the boat is the subject. And I know some judges would want, they'd probably say, well, we need to have these, these people turn. We need to see their faces or have them turn around. But if they did that, then they would become the subject and the boat would no longer be the subject. So I was kind of torn on whether, you know, I would prefer them to be, you know, looking where I could see part of their face it does tell a story and it makes the picture way more interesting. If they weren't in the boat, it would be, I think, kind of boring, just, you know, staring at the top of the boat. Uh, so the mother or, you know, older sisters helping these, these, this girl and whoever's hidden behind here putting on their, their life jackets. Uh, the angle that it was taken from is nice because you see more of the boat. Um, let's see, I scored this one, four for composition four for impact and four for technical. 
Lake Machines by David Powers, 12 points. David Powers? That's what it says. I'm going to have to find out how he got those frames, huh? Okay. Mean Machines. <laughs> well, whoever submitted this one knows I like dogs a lot, and these dogs are just awesome. In a way, they're the subject, not the machine over here, but that's okay. I don't care. <laughs> I think it really works well. And uh, the, uh, the dogs are just really sharp and focused. They're, their focus on where they're headed is just, you know, riveting. And I love the, the tongue that's flopping out over here. And the speed that the picture was taken with was perfect because you, you see all the snow being kicked up by their feet. And uh, the only thing I'd probably, I would criticize is the, the really heavy darkening up here at the top. And I, I can understand why they wanted it dark because there's probably people's feet or cars or, you know, there's something, something up here. But maybe if they'd eliminated a little bit of it on the snow, then it wouldn't look so drastic. Uh, and they might be able to go back and just, you know, kind of increase the exposure there and, you know, bring that back. It's nice they have just the, the right amount of space to the right of the dogs so they can run. You know, you don't feel like they're being crowded. Uh, and once again, you know, the machines prop this, this, <laughs> it's probably not the subject, but it's okay. I don't mind. Um, this one I scored five for composition five for impact and four for technical. Mean Machines by David Powers, 14 points. All right. We should try. If somebody hears about the dog sled races at Priest this year, let me know and we'll try to figure out a way to do a little field trip up there. Oh, cool. New England Harbor. Okay, and this is another one. When I first looked at it, I didn't even think machine. And then I thought, well, duh, it's got a you know, what, like a dozen machines in the foreground here. But I was kind of thinking landscape and I was more interested in this building, which looks like I thought, well, maybe it was a church, but I think it must be a county building, like a courthouse or something, because there isn't a cross on the top of it. Uh, very well exposed. There's nothing blown out in the water, nothing blown out in the clouds. I mean, a little bit right here, but I think that works fine because the you know sun's really coming through there. Uh, it's super sharp. I mean, if you were a sailor, you could zoom in here and you could identify all the gear on these, these sailboats. You'd know what all this stuff was. Uh, one thing I noticed was the marina really needs more parking because with this many boats, there's not a lot of parking up there. Uh, anyway, this was a fun one. And I, I really kind of thought more of it as a landscape, but uh <laughs> I scored this five for composition, four for impact, and five for technical. New England Harbor by Tamara McGee, 14 points. There she is, getting around again. My gosh, she was in New England. Purpose served. Okay. Uh, and probably people have different opinions on this one. I don't know. I, I was, I, you know, the having this windmill here, and this house over here, and it just seems like they don't work as well for me. I feel like there's two different things going on here. I, I assume this was probably taken from a drone, and I think it might work better if the, if the drone had come down a little bit more and shown us more of the windmill. You wouldn't want the windmill to, to touch the horizon, but I think it could come up a little bit higher, and it might, might be a little bit stronger image that way. There's a little bit of a kind of a purple cast to this picture, which could be taken care of pretty easily with a tint slider in, in Lightroom. Uh, but I, that was a little bothersome. I know that this, this old building and this windmill are probably going to be gone someday because you can tell by all these tractor marks down here that the you know, farmers having to drive around these things all the time. He's probably going to get mad one day and you know, burn this shed down and you know, sell the windmill or something, which is a shame because it's a pretty cool, pretty cool place. But another friend came through yesterday and saw this one and just thought it was awesome. So, you know, this is just my opinion. I scored this one three for composition, 
four for impact and three for technical. Purpose served by Tim McGee, 10 points. Retirement. Okay, this is a nice composition. Nothing, you know, super dramatic. I like the angle that, uh, you know, the, the horizon kind of goes up at an angle here. And the wagon's just enough different, enough different of an angle that, you know, makes it a little more, more interesting. Um, the person, I think that when I was first looking at this, I started thinking, well, there's some really odd colors down here in the wheels. And, you know, I'm going, well, I don't know what this, these strange, you know, purples and stuff. And then I, when I zoomed in a bit or held it up to my eye, I could see, well, they'd probably use the clarity slider to really bring out the texture in this wagon. And they also brought it out here in the grass a little too much, I think. Uh, so I think that might've been a little, little heavy handed with, with uh, the clarity. I mean, if you kind of scoot in, you can kind of see the grass here. I love the clarity slider. I use it all the time and I overdone it on lots of my things too. So I think that's probably my only criticism. I hope they moved in closer and did just some, you know, up close views of the wagon because I think there's a lot of possibilities there. So I scored this one four for composition, four for impact and four for technical. Retirement by Dorothy Detler, 12 points. Scroll saw. <laughs> well, as a former woodworker who sold all of his tools to buy camera equipment, I probably appreciate this one more than the rest of you. But uh, this is a really kind of a, an interesting photo. And the machine is on because you can see the, you know, the blade is going up and down here. The, and the, it's shaking, so the light is kind of blurry. It's really a sharp picture. The one end of the wood is out of focus, but I don't think you could take this picture and get all, everything in focus without focus stacking or something, which would be pretty hard to do. So that doesn't bother me at all. Uh, everything that needs to be sharp is sharp. In fact, I was trying to kind of brush some dust off of it because I thought it kind of gotten dusty down in my studio. And then I realized it's just the sawdust I mean, it was, you know, it's super realistic. Everything is there. Um, so I scored this one four for composition, four for impact, and five for technical. Scroll saw by Kevin Watt, 13 points. This is, the go, last one in, this is the last one in this category, westbound train. Okay, another location where many of us have photographed. We all have kind of come out to this location underneath this sign, Leita Junction. But this is the image we all wanted because this was done from a drone or one hell of a tall ladder. And when you're on the ground, you do not see this. So this is really a unique image. And uh, maybe, maybe some of the people here will be putting a drone on their Christmas list. I don't know. Um, but he's got a westbound train here and I zoomed in and the engines are on the other side. This one's an, an eastbound train. So he's got two trains, one going, you know, one direction, one the other. There's a nice skyline here of uh, Spokane. And um, the only thing that kind of bothers me is just the light is a little bit too harsh. There's nice clouds off in the distance, but they must not be overhead here because we've got some pretty strong shadows and I know that's not something you can you know you can't dial the sun one direction or the other uh, but some uh, overcast sky overhead would probably make this you know pop out a little bit more and not be quite so so harsh so I scored this five for composition five for impact and four for technical All right, Westbound Train by Tim McGee, 14 points. Way to go, right. Tim. Yeah. Uh, subject, monochrome. Oh, gosh, we're getting to the end. We are. Big wheels. Okay, well, this is one of mine. I didn't think I had that many machines. 
And I think this is the only machine I entered, but since then I found three or four that were way better. I was like, what? So I guess I need better uh, keywording in, in uh, Lightroom. And here's what uh, David Sams says about this one. A very impressive subject composed with strong lines. The one technical problem I see is some strong haloing, both light and dark in the sky up here in the upper left. Um, and he says with the new sky selection tools now available, it is quite easy re to replace the sky part of the image with a version from the original file that has not been highlighted or shadowed or you know, where you haven't done any clarity adjustments. These set settings can easily cause halos when they are applied with strong values. Well, today I thought, oh, I'm just gonna be so cool. I'm gonna go into Photoshop and I'm gonna you know, take this sky out and put a new one in it. Then I can show you how I fixed it. It's not that easy. <laughs> I, I couldn't do it. I do have one. I don't know if I open it up, if it'll... Now nah, it's not gonna open up. Oh, there it is. Here's one where I kind of fixed it a little bit. You can see I, I tried to take this sort of smudge here, this little smudge here, and there's a, a white line around this that I took out. And there's some white around some of the railing that I was able to get out. But it took a while and I really wasn't completely successful right in here. So I guess you gotta have David Sam's skill to do that. So he's gave me a four, five, four. Big Wheels by John Lepper, 13 points. Oh, and just for fun, I'll show the original so you can see what processing does. That's the original, that sucks. <laughs> I mean, I even had to take this extension cord out. I don't know how I ended up getting it look like the other one, but. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Classic American muscle. Okay, well, this is one of those images that is the decisive moment. If this picture had been taken a few seconds before or a few seconds after, it just would, wouldn't have, uh, you know, just wouldn't have worked. I mean, look at these tires down here. They're like, you know, grabbing the asphalt and just starting to kind of like, you know, crunch up. I can't believe it. You can see the one over here too. And, uh, you know, the wheels are off the ground. I mean, this was the perfect moment to capture this. And uh, it's great black and white. There's nothing, you know, blown out. I didn't think anything was blown out. Uh, it might be nice to have a little more on the left. I don't know what was over there. Maybe it would have been distracting, you know, but have a little more room for it to run. But, but I like this. I gave this a 5.55. Five, five. And whoever goes to the drags again, give me a call. I'd love to go. I don't even care about my camera. I just want to watch. Classic American Muscle by Tamara McGee, 15 points. All right. Grandfather's Treasure. Grandfather's Treasure. I'm always amazed at how many people get into photography because either a grandfather or a parent did it when they were, you know, young and they, you know, Maybe they got in the dark room and, you know, got to see their their grandfather or parent messing around with us with it. So I don't know if that's just a title or if this really is the person's grandfather's camera. This black and white is just buttery. I think it would probably win the award for the most ink used. I, you know, I bet if you held it up, you'd be able to feel the ink. It's just the blacks are just super black. And there's still tons of detail, you know, in all the, the dark areas. I'd like to know uh, if this person printed it themselves or if they had it printed somewhere because, and also what kind of paper they use, because it's just, you know, in person, it's just really a nice, nice black and white. Uh, maybe a little more room on the top would be nice because this little, you know, device is, is taking up some room down here and we have a lot of, you know, empty space down here. I don't know if that would, would you know, make it better or not, but I, but I really like this one. And I scored this one four for composition, five for impact, and five for technical. 
Grandfather's Treasure by Elaine Giadoni, 14 points. Nice job. Homespun Memories. It is a great title. <laughs> I always have a hard time coming up with good titles, but this is a perfect title. And this is the oldest machine photographed. So it should win something for that. Um, let's see, there's some really nice, I mean, you can see all the details in the print, in the blacks, okay? You might not be able to pick them out here in this, this digital. So that's nice. Some of the whites are kind of blown out. The light, you know, is really strong coming through this window. I imagine, I, I don't think this was in somebody's home, but maybe it was. Uh, I imagine this maybe have been a museum or, or something like that. And the person, you know, didn't really have the ability to set up a tripod and do an HDR, but an HDR would have really been a good choice for this. And it would have helped the, the stuff in the windows show up more and brought out the detail in this, this cane back chair. Uh, the chair is a little more, I mean, you, you notice the chair more than the machine and the machine is supposed to be the subject. Again, I think, you know, a couple people might think that the, the wall should be perpendicular, but I don't think so. I think, you know, the, the chair is perpendicular, the, the spinning wheels is, you know, the right, you know, it's perpendicular. And I don't know how you'd ever get the, the wall and everything else to fit. And if it's in an older building, it kind of slants, but I also think it adds a little, you know, dynamic quality quality to it. So um, I scored this four for composition. It would have been nice if, you know, they could have moved some stuff around and maybe moved the spinning wheel into a little lighter area. Uh, four for impact and three for technical. Homespun Memories by Kim Barbie, 11 points. All right. And Kim, since you're here, I, I cut out a piece of cardboard and put it on the back, just tacked it on lightly with some, some sticky tape. But I was worried that in getting this transferred over to uh, Judith and Dave's, there was no backing and I didn't want your print to get damaged. So you can easily peel off the, the backing I put on it. Prohibition Ooh. machine. Okay, well, it looks like somebody's probably photographed a parade, which is one of my favorite things to do. Um, and it's a, a, a kind of a, an interesting and fun, you know, float that was passing by. If it is a parade, I'm, I'm pretty sure it is, but um, so that's kind of neat. It, it's too bad they didn't have a little better location, which is really hard to find uh, in a parade so that we didn't have this brand new, you know, van here in the background and this little figure here, because I think that kind of detracts a little bit. Um, I wish they'd had these bullet holes when I was a kid. I would have gotten some of those because my first car was a 1935 Chevy. It had spoke wheels. Its bumper looked almost exactly like this, although it was a little newer than this Ford. Uh, my parents probably wouldn't have appreciated the bullet holes though. Okay, I don't know what they've, done here. I mean, the car and everything looks, you know, pretty well exposed, but I think maybe trying to bring the, the face back in this person, they've just, you know, the processing was pushed. And here you can see that black, black line here instead of a white line that, that they call haloing or, you know, I don't know, some people call it fringing. I don't know. Uh, and again, on this, this girl in the, in the van over here, so uh, maybe it was just, you know, taken from quite a ways away and it might've been moving and it wasn't quite as sharp and the person was trying to bring it back. So I gave this a, a three for composition, a four for impact and a three for technical. Prohibition Machine by David Powers, 10 points. Oh, David, I'll have to find out where he was. Returning to port. Okay, well, this is another picture where if the subject is machines, <coughs> I think Mount Rainier is the subject in this one. And that doesn't bother me that because there is a machine here, 
But I know oftentimes we'll go back and look at our pictures and try to find something with the subject in it. And the subject isn't necessarily the real subject of the picture. Um, and again, this one, it must have been taken from a long ways away or something. I don't know. It, with the processing, some really strange things have been happening to the clouds here. Uh, the fact that they just show a little bit of water, I kind of like that because we don't need a lot of water to know that this is a container ship. And the composition is nice with Mount Rainier sort of anchoring the whole thing. I don't know, is this little Tahoma over here? I don't know. Um, but the processing has just been pushed a little bit too far. And I gave this a four for composition, a three for impact, and a two for technical. Returning to port by David Powers, nine points. All right. Our oh, last picture of the four. evening. Rotation direction. All right, another machine. And once again, might not be as interesting to other people. I've always just kind of liked machines. Black and white is such a good, uh, you know, thing to use for machines because they aren't necessarily about color. They're more about shape and form and texture in this case. And this one's kind of interesting because it looks like uh, the maker was trying a real shallow depth of field because the only thing that's really in super in focus is this little area right here, which has the arrow letting us know which way <laughs> the rotation is going to be, which is an important thing when using power tools. And uh, so it was kind of, I, I like it and kind of commend, well, I commend the viewer for trying, you know, something different. I don't necessarily like this sticker up in the corner that says Bosch. Now the maker might really like that because Bosch is a real nice, you know, brand of equipment. You know, if it had said something else, they might've taken it off. But uh, I would either take the print out or maybe crop this so that sticker wasn't there. And what I usually do is hold up my finger, my thumb over something and then take it away and see, was it better before or after? And once in a while, I'll even try a different crop. I'll make a copy of a picture, try a different crop, and then I'll have them side by side in Lightroom. And I'll click from one to the other to see if I like one more than another. You know, I don't know if there's a little too much over here on the left that we don't need, uh, possibly. Let's see. So I scored this three for composition, four for impact, and four for technical. Well. <laughs> Wait. Oh no, now I lost that. Oh shoot. Hold on. <sighs> Something got in my way. Crazy machine. And my problem would be the addition, <laughs> even with only three numbers. <laughs> okay, well, let's see. November. Oh, scroll down. Scroll down. Last one. There we go. All right. So that was three, four, four. Correct. Um, no. There we go. So rotation direction by Kevin Watt, 11 points. Okay, so I can go back here to. So that's it. Back. Okay, let's see if I bored anybody and they left. I can't tell. Let's see. <laughs> well, thank you, John. Appreciate your stepping in and doing the judging. Did a great job. Of course. Oh, thank you. It was fun. I, if anybody wants to kind of linger and, and talk about any of the pictures, we can certainly do that. Um, don't forget. The subject of the month next month is mountains. Uh, so uh, keep that in mind. Uh, we got about a week to get the digitals in. Uh, I, I don't know, if, John. Are we going to do a night a night thing a night I, trip somewhere? I keep looking at the weather and it just doesn't seem to cooperate. I don't want to do it on the weekend because I there's usually a little more going on downtown on the weekends. I don't know if it'd be quite as safe. I don't know, but 
we get a day when it's the weather's not raining or snowing, even if it's still a little cold. Um, and I went on a walk the other day that if you get a chance, there's a walk now that goes through Peaceful Valley and you actually get close to the river in several locations and it's a new trail. And if you go down to the Sandifer Bridge down in People's Park and park there, it's pretty safe because there's always activity and lots of cars there. And then follow the trail all the way up to uh, Red Band Park. It's a really nice trail through Peaceful Valley. And uh, I think you'd enjoy it. If you, I don't know how long it probably took me an hour because I was taking pictures, but to walk one mm -hmm. way. The city said it's going to be a complete loop. You can go from Kendall Yards all the way around through Peaceful Valley and then back up to the courthouse. Yeah. Eventually, it's going to be connect up with that area, that trail right behind the library. Once Spokane Club lets them go by. <laughs> anyway, uh, we'll try to find something. I, you know, I don't know how many people like to go out in the cold, but we can always try, you know, you know. Some kind of a little field trip. John, let's go to the drags. Oh, so, um, I, I would yeah. love to. <laughs> you just let me know when they are. None of my friends will go. They're all too old. Oh, my mom and dad raced on the track when I was in utero. <laughs> in my blood. <laughs> well, if anybody is interested in the dog sled races, it's going to be the first weekend in February. Oh, I'm okay, going to put it on my calendar. What kind of dogs were those? Was that huh? yours, David? Was that? Was the dog sled yours? Yes. Uh, what kind of dogs year. were those? Um, I'm not sure what they were, but they, they're they the um, drag racers of sled racing. Nice. So they're, they're, good, they're good to go for short distances fast, but they're not so good on endurance. Gotcha. Oh, wow. Where's the, where is the race? Where's the race? <laughs> It's in Priest Lake. At the, okay. at the at the Priest Lake airstrip. Where the where the Priest Norton. where the airstrip is, you kind of go past Priest Lake and it's over on the right on the left hand side. And they have signs out for it when it happens. But early February? February. First weekend in February. Is but, what right now that's what they're saying. But they're probably gonna confirm it's say it confirming imminently, but I just looked at a yeah. notice from today and you know, tenor weather always always makes a difference on it. So, yeah, you, you'll you'll want to check because if the snow's bad, they might not do it that weekend. But um, usually by February, there's some pretty good snow up there. Thanks, Tim. So do you have any questions about any of the pictures or anything else? No, I wanted to ask Tim McGee a question. Okay. Since he was a racer, sure. did you ever race over in the Seattle area? No, we've gone and watched over there, but uh, I never did in our recent heyday. Okay. Um, I know he came over here a few times. Were you familiar with a fellow named Jack Bailey? Doesn't ring a bell. Doesn't ring a bell. Okay. He's my cousin. Oh, and wow. He cool. raced for years, and um, he, know, he um, actually rubbed elbows, I think, a little bit with, um, oh, God, I can't remember their names now, but some of the bigger racers. Huh? He had a way of getting around. <laughs> so, so, Tim, where was that? Was that Woodburn? The one, uh, the picture Tamara submitted. Uh, I think that one was out at, out here, wasn't it? The Mustang. The Mustang, the Mustang, the Mustang yeah. Uh, the one this week was out at Raceway Park. Last week it was at Kent. Yeah, ever being Speedway over in Seattle. Oh, okay. Pacific Raceway. Sorry. Yeah, hey, I'd like to know if Elaine printed her black and white of the camera. Did you print that, Elaine? Well, you got to hit the space bar, I think. That would be Costco. Really? Yeah. So did you, was that quite a while ago you printed it or did you have them mail it to you? I, I tried the mailing and it worked. Wow. Huh. Well, they did a good job. <laughs> huh. Hey, any thoughts about Barrister, the Barrister Winery this year or uh, yeah, whenever it is? Yeah, the show's going to be in April. Okay, in April. So we'll have to set it up. We'll have to set it up before the first of April. So probably like a day or two before the first of April. 
And I think what, what we'll probably do is have people um, submit what they would like to, to have in the show, maybe a, a few weeks beforehand, and, um, and then we can decide what we want to do. The space is a little more limited at Barrister than it used to be because he moved the office and took away part of the space for it. But I think we'll probably be able to do two prints a person, would be my guess. Oh, and I meant to tell people, if there's anybody that wants to do Barrister, but you know, you don't want to invest in a frame or whatever, I have some frames. I have a few frames that you can put a you know, 16 by 20 mat into. And you could borrow the frame for the show if you want to. They're black uh, wood frames, kind of well, maybe two inches wide or something like that. So well, for, for the shows we do, we do frame prints or you could do, you can do metal prints or you can do canvas prints. So it's kind of up to you what, what you want to submit. And of course we want to represent the club well. So pick things you really like. Mm -hmm. So other than that, how you doing, Tim? Good. Oh, good. Yeah. As far as folks, uh, as far as getting your prints printed, like for print night. Um, so Tamara and I have been experimenting around a little bit. These last ones I did came from Costco. I'm, I'm seeing a tendency. It seems like my prints I get are always darker than what I uh, am seeing on the digital. Is that a, is that pretty normal? Are you guys run into that? Or do you need to add a little exposure before you print? Or yeah, Don, I should probably what? answer that. When I did Costco, I always turned my monitor down to about half brightness, and then and uh, I did the um, editing at half brightness, and then they came out pretty good at Costco. But Costco actually has the profiles available if you want to look at the profiles. And that's oh, okay. what I did. I, I called Costco. I mean, wherever you know you mail them, and uh, because I needed, I didn't have the right profile. I had the profile for the one here in town, but online, when you mail them in, it didn't list a profile. It took me forever to talk to someone. I mean, first two guys couldn't understand a word they said. I finally <laughs> got to the right person and they told me the website to go to and to download the profile. And so I've, Interesting. I've, gotten, okay. I've gotten quite a few pictures printed there. I mean, you got to wait for them. Oh, and then I'll I complained. I got 10 done. They were rolled up so tightly that even putting them on a flat surface with dictionaries and books on for a week, they still rolled up. So when I did yeah, them yeah, last yeah. time, I called and complained. I said, hey, I can't even mad them. And so when I got my last ones, they put them in a different container for me that were oh, yeah. But I don't know if I got to call every time and bitch about it and say, hey, don't be you know, <laughs> doing that. You know what's a better way to straighten them out, Donna, is to hang them up. Hang them up and have weights on the bottom of them and let them sit hanging up. That's a good idea. And they straighten out pretty good. Just like with a clothespin or something? Well, what I do, I have a, a, a board, a metal board and I put magnets at the top of them, and oh. then I put weights at the bottom of them, and just let them. And they now. Yeah. Well, I think I'll just bring them over clips. to your house, David. Yeah. <laughs> hey, <Donna>. Okay. <laughs> Donna, Tim, I think I think R and R really does a good job. I I would suggest you try R and R, and it's not yeah, those, expensive at all. Okay. Now, I've used there, them. That was dark too. I used problem. them once. Go ahead. There Sorry. is a problem with R and R, and that is if you want if you want the low cost prints, they're limited to twelve inches on the. It, they can make them real wide, but they can't make them very tall, hmm. unless you want to pay for the premium prints. And the premium prints are about four times as expensive as the the, yeah. the cheaper ones. Hey, so if you have a print that you really love, they would be great in do their premium printing, but it's a lot a lot more expensive. Gotcha. And then there's also ink, there's ink to media out in the valley as well. He's pretty good. He 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 spends a fair amount of time talking to you about him. Nice. I didn't know that was local. That was an online thing. But Donna, can you email us out that profile for Costco? So um, I'm thinking right now that maybe we're going to try to meet in person starting in January. Uh, we got the deal worked out with the church. They're going to grandfather us in. We're going to be able to pay the same amount we paid previously for the space. Uh, we probably won't meet as many times there. We'll probably meet just for digital night and print night. 
And then if we do any education nights, we'll do them somewhere else. I'm looking at the sheet here of R and R sizes. A ten this this price may have changed, but a ten by fourteen was only four bucks, and then you could print uh, twelve by sixteen for six seventy five. Now maybe if you're doing yeah, four, four prints, that might you might think that was too much. But. Yeah, no, no, no. I did. I, I used to. Um, what do we do? Ten or eleven by fourteen? Yeah, I had eleven by fourteens done over there. They were they were fine. I just uh, yeah, five I went bucks. into the last minute and I went in and got them like yeah, at the last minute. And they were a little dark was all. So. Yeah. I, I think almost everybody prints a, comes out a little darker than what you think it's going to. So just crank that exposure up a little bit and compensate, yeah. Well, do, does R&R have a profile you can let, download so you know that your screen is going to match I, whatever they print? I don't know. I don't know. They, they do. I didn't know that. They do. It, their website has a lot of that kind of technical stuff on it. But Donna, I was asking you, and I don't know, maybe nobody could hear me, but could you email out that page from Costco to get those printer profiles? It's not on the Costco website. I mean, I, I had know. to call. I had to call. I don't remember. I mean, you can. I just don't remember. Uh, okay. Let me take. Let me take a look at it and see. Because um, yeah, I can't remember what I did exactly. Okay. But if I'll, you stumble across it, I'd love to. Okay. Love to have out that. Thank you. Okay. If you talk to Erin at R and R, she'll work with you and do anything it takes to make your print correct. Uh, she's a member of our club and she's very happy, and very helpful. That's great. No, Tamara said the same thing. I, I just it was my own fault because I was down to the wire, you know, procrastinating for the last minute on everything. Sure. So. <laughs> that runs in the family, by the way. <laughs> that, that's why Costco oh. should have moved out of Spokane. Exactly. They went and did this mail thing for all us procrastinators. <laughs> right. We're in trouble. But when you say that uh, R and R can do fairly wide, but not very tall or whatever, can they do something like a forty inch by eight inch? Yes. Oh yeah, I just okay. had something printed. Oh, yeah. that was they have forty six inches long, twelve inches high. Okay. But the twelve inch limit is only on the low cost printing. The, so the I forgot what they called it, but it's the economy. It's the economy. Economy, yeah, economy, economy printing yeah. is lim limited economy to 12 price. inches in height. But if you buy their custom printing, they, they have all kinds of sizes. <laughs> I mean, you can do just about anything. I mean, that's weird. I'm looking at this. A bit more expensive. And it says 10 by 20, and it's in their economy page. So unless they've changed all their stuff, well, they had 24 by 36 on the economy page. No, well, someone told me that that R and R only printed JPEG. I thought, what? Is they only true? do JPEG. A lot of places only do JPEG. Hmm. Yeah, Almost. but we, you know, we submit our uh, prints, our our our, um, our uh, digitals JPEG. Yeah. Well, that's it, not the same as printing in a lot bigger, though. That's not the same. Intime ink to media will do double with R and R. Mm -hmm. So most folks submitting a glossy or matte. I was curious about that too. I use the oh god, I can't remember what I use. I have to look. Um, I don't think there were any matte pictures. Mine were matte. <laughs> yeah, there were there were some that were like semi gloss. Or, you know, our luster and then some that were glossy, but I don't. Maybe luster is what I was looking for. Yeah, no, I don't okay. know if there was anything matte. Uh oh, time. I use, I, are you talking the surface of the paper, Tim? Right, whether it's the yeah. glossy. I was doing the glossy, but then I saw some of Tamara's that were less you know, glossy. I maybe, maybe luster is the right word. Oh, well, that's yeah. kind of cool too, so I don't know. It, I use in the luster. economy prints, they only have luster, luster or, or the glossy. Those, that's, that's what they right. have in the economy. I've tried and some John, the, the, the mounting, good. The mounting <laughs> you were asking about was from from R and R. Yeah. That, that stiff black board. Oh, that oh, the, the mounting. I that stuff. Yeah, I had them mount them. Oh, okay. That's um, the best way to do it. That's what I do too. They also have metallic paper, which really pops off the off the paper. Ah, huh, that'd be I fun. Tried that yet. Did it did it cost very much, David, to have them mounted? Do you remember? Um, I it I think it was like nine dollars for one size and twelve dollars for the bigger size. Oh, huh, okay. It wasn't a lot, but it 
It did run up a bit. Once four, you do four, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pete Cloy, when I first started at Camera Club, he told me that glossy paper is not used that anymore, that luster is more the popular paper to use. I don't know if that's true or not, but Deke seems to know what he's talking about. So I always print on luster. Yeah. But those metal prints are really fun. I print a lot on those. Well, I think that's going to be it for me. I have to go have a little nip of something now. I have one other question for people in general is, do we want to do something about Christmas to get together for some kind of Christmas get together or not? I mean, it's kind of, we were sort of thinking we wouldn't start doing getting together in person again until January, but, you know, do we want to do like our traditional Christmas dinner event that we've been doing? I vote yes. give, it, give it some thought and let me know. Or only if it's only if it's face to face, not Zoom. <laughs> well, yeah. So well, one I, thing, I think Zoom would be fun. <laughs> With food. Uh -uh. No. I'm, I'm talking about in person. And uh, <laughs> the only thing that you need to be aware of is the church is requiring that if we're going in the church, that we have to wear masks while we're in the church. What about a restaurant? If it, but it has to be um, reserved now. And it might even be too late. We also have to be careful about vaccination. I mean, we're just, yeah. you, I'm not well, going around, I'm not going around yeah. unvaccinated people. So, yeah. Well, then I in won't person. come to dinner. I won't come to the Christmas dinner. Yeah. In person. I I think to no, I, I, I'm sorry. You know, I'm a, I'm a little bit older. I don't like to admit it. And, <laughs> you know, I could die. I'm not going to do it. I think the rules I'm here. would be the same for both the church and the restaurants, which is that you must wear your mask right, on right. your way in and out. But once you're seated at your table, you yeah. can remove it because it's really hard to eat with the mask. Right, exactly, right. exactly. Yeah. Well, we just got back from, we were in Seattle a few days ago and all the restaurants in Seattle require you to show your vaccination card. And some of them actually ask for ID as well as the vaccination <laughs> card. Yeah. That's ridiculous. That's how it works. Yeah, that's no. Seattle. Not, if you're, not Seattle. if you're immune compromised. <laughs> that's I right. I lived in Seattle it for 30 years. Other people, so okay, okay, but that's totally aside. The question, well, right, the question the before everybody yeah. right now is how do we feel about getting together in person in December to do our traditional kind of Christmas get together? I'd so give it, give it some thought and send me your information, what your thoughts are. Or maybe some ideas about where you could do that, you know, is what might be a viable venue for something like that. Mm, yeah. Could do it on our back patio, but it'd be a little cold. A cold. <laughs> well, who knows? Maybe we'd luck out, get a 50 degree day. Yeah, but you wouldn't have to wear a mask because you're outdoors. Yeah, right. I Are guess we, sure could do it that, at, we could do it at Brick West, and, you know, we could do their big patio. But it's going to be too cold to do that in December. Probably. So anyway, that just give it some thought and let me know what you think. And so those who don't like what I'm thinking and those who do like what I'm thinking, just let me know. <laughs> so I think we're in good shape. Anybody have anything else for the good of the order that they would like to do? I'd like to ask quickly about that camera, the picture of the camera. Who, whose was that? That was, that was mine. Oh yeah, I just oh, love that. Mm -hmm. And it was my grandfather's. Really, and that was yeah. lovely. Yeah, was lovely camera. Lovely <laughs> picture too. Thanks. <laughs> hey Tim, Tim, are you still on? Tim, Tim, I'm right here. Tim, you're muted. Oh, okay. Tim, 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 would you give me a call um, tomorrow sometime? Sure. Like, thanks. All right, we'll do. Other Tim. All right, toodaloo, everyone. Thanks. Okay. Good night. Good night. Good night.
And thanks, everybody, for submitting. Thanks.